Welcome back, everybody, to our computer vision series. This is episode three, where we are going to continue to work with optical character recognition, better known as OCR. In this episode, we're going to be continuing working with our small snippet of code that we've been building. But we're going to focus on a possible practical scenario and add some modifications for it as well. Great. Before we do that, in the last video, we went over some general intuition for OCR and for some of the related libraries. We also discussed some of the APIs out there currently handling OCR related tasks. And I wanted to show you a quick example of one of them that we discussed. This is the Google Cloud Vision API. And we're gonna take a look at it in a second to run some tests. And I'm gonna include a sample file that we could take a look at as well. Now I was searching for some sample file information and I came across, I was just looking for a brief invoice sample and came across it at the machine learning lab. We use the following sample file to demonstrate the Google Cloud Vision API. Just as a quick, easy example, the file is included. So if I go and grab the file, let me drop it in real quick. We're gonna let this load. And we could see the following, the Google Cloud Vision API, this OCR API breaks it down into the following format. It, it becomes very useful because what I like about it is that it breaks it down into JSON. So if you're comfortable or familiar working with JSON, it actually breaks it down the entire structure into the following format. And you could test it on other documents. If you have other files, feel free to experiment with the Cloud Vision API in this quick example. And we can also explore some of the other properties that it lets us view. If you view the document structure, you can see how the OCR, this engine, actually breaks it down with each of the detections and groups it into specific blocks. All right, quick demonstration. We can see that the Cloud Vision API and other APIs out there are very powerful, very useful for OCR. Let's jump into Spider, and we're going to continue working on our code and project in a practical scenario. All right, so we're back in Spider here, and we have our code. I have it commented just to have that blocked out for the moment. And stick with me for a moment because we're gonna go through a practical scenario. And I'm gonna give you some of the details to try and put together, or I want you to try and think on how to solve this scenario. So you're working for either a large multinational corporation or even a small business that receives receipts daily and has to store them. You need to have them saved. So you receive them in paper formats from the store or stores that you work for for each item purchased or purchase orders or daily receipt printouts that are sent to you as a backup that you need to save and work with. So how can OCR help? All right, so you could store these receipts. You could scan each individual receipt and save them, let's say in either a Dropbox, Google Drive or cloud backup, that's fine. But say each is an individual file and sometimes you have to go and look for receipt numbers item numbers, or other details on the receipt. What can you do with OCR to help? Now, you don't want to have to open up each individual file and look for, you don't want to have to save them in a large folder structure to iterate through each one. You can do that, but how can you automate this with OCR? And that's what we're going to take a look at here. We're going to take a single sample and run the process and add some modifications. We're going to run our detection on our receipt that I'm going to include in the files. We are then going to detect the text on it with OCR. Then we're going to write it to a file. So essentially when you're automating this or when you're putting all these files together, you'd be writing them to a database. Then you'd be able to search through it. And we're going to add two other slight modifications as well. So the first things first, we can actually use some of the code that we've used earlier. I'm going to grab some of it here just so we don't have any other. We'll leave these. Actually, I don't have to comment these ones out because I want our import statements. We can leave them uncommented so we can actually have them in use. And I'm going to grab the following because we're going to use this for our detection. We want our demo. Let's keep it. And you can rename the variables here. You can rename them just to keep it more organized. But since we're only working with this one piece, we're going to work with the receipt. And you can see the receipt. I'll bring it up for you. Just a quick little receipt that I created for fun that we could see. So we want to grab this following information. We have our invoice number. You'd have names and addresses item numbers, dates, purchases, prices, information that you can search for. We'll close that. We also, as I talked to you about, 
when we are running this OCR, we also in this scenario would be very beneficial to automate it to write it to a file. So then, for example, you're working with a case or you need to pull up information, you can look through the database to access this specific receipt, you won't have to search individual files, it'll make the process very simple. So we also want to write the following we want to open. And we're going to create a demo txt we want to append our data and then we can print all right let's run this i just want to select this and we're going to run it and we should have our ocr we should have our information returned so let's open up the demo text it's going to write it to this file and we can see the information, our invoice number, name, address. Now you can take this further to pre-process, to create the data, even if you want to write it in CSV format to store it in individual cells. This is just a very simple demo text file that we can search through. Now for a short little note, I know we've been working with a sm very small snippet of code essentially here, but it just kind of goes to show you how powerful that the Tesseract library is and these OCR libraries are we can run a lot of operations or mainly the OCR off of specific file formats pretty simply. And then it allows you to continue to work with. So we have our information written to a file. And in our scenario, if information came up where you were looking for to see in the file, if it included a specific set of numbers, or maybe you're looking for an invoice number or if to see something was purchased, you can always write a simple statement. Now we're working again, simple Python statements here. If we can check, let's see for our scenario, let's bring up our invoice sample again of our receipt, excuse me. And let's look for the invoice number here. And we can close this. So if our invoice number was 32091-8380, checking our file in our demo.txt close that close our parentheses we want to read the file if it's here let's print true actually i need this since it's a string see if this error we actually close that up really quickly and we can run this again to check in the file and right here, log to the console, we can see that the number is indicated within the file. So on a very simple level on the surface, if we needed to check within our documents, if we had that receipt number of all the purchase orders, say you have thousands of purchase orders a day or invoices a day, you can check to see if that was accessed within that specific file that you were working with it really saves time. All right, and for our last modification, in the beginning of this video, we went over the Google Cloud API with an invoice example, the following invoice sample, which actually was in Italian. And the reason I had that and the reason I wanted it in a different language, well, first of all, I actually found it and figured it was pretty interesting to have an invoice sample in a different language to work with. So I ran some tests. And on a side note, we're going to install the following library here. And I left the command in here remove that actually, excuse me, I don't want to have the pip command in here, I need to import it since I have it installed. If you have your created environment, remember to activate it first, then run the pip installation command. But the side note that I wanted to mention was with this library, if you are testing the file, or you're running these tests on the file, try to not spam this library because the Google API, it's going to think that you're a bot and you're going to receive an HTTP error, HTTP uh, 503 error. It's probably gonna think you're a bot or crawler. I was running a few tests yesterday in a couple languages for our English file to translate it into other languages and it blocked me. So just a heads up, try not to spam it. It's always fun to test, but you have to be aware of the limits of services and the related information. So this is a library built to run these translations off of the Google API we can use the following snippet of code. We want to call our ghostly. 
let's add the parentheses here because we want to print the translated information. I'm going to add a little information here again with our scenario to try and think of it in an intuitive level. So we want to translate our text since that's what we're printing. We want to translate our text. Let's log this and we want to translate it. Actually, let's translate it to German. We could try German. You can pick the language that you want to try and test it with with ghostly if you're looking for further information you can always look at the ghostly library and now let's run it and hope that i do not receive the 503 error that i am blocked and hopefully we get some output here in the translated text and if anyone speaks german and wants to double check if the translation is worth correct remember the google api is running these translations so they might not be the most 100 percent accurate Feel free to comment on the video and let us know if it translated correctly for the German. Let's run this. And there you have it. So if you're a multinational, even small business, you have receipts or you need to provide customers receipts or files in other language formats. This small little chunk of code is pretty nifty to work with to be able to automate certain processes. You know, you can have this running on folders. It doesn't have to be single files. You can have it running on large batches of receipts if you want them in other formats, if you want to store them in CSVs, Excel, specific tabular data that you can work with. This little snippet of code is gonna get you there. It's going to give you a great start to work with it. So great job up until this point working through this. We're gonna leave off here for our small snippet of code. We did go through a large amount of information or at least our scenario. So I hope that you can start to try and really think about how you can use this, what use cases you can apply it to. OCR is very helpful in a range of industries. If you have any questions, comments, ideas that you would like to discuss, please share them in the video. Be more than happy to discuss them with you. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It is a fantastic way to stay up to date in the industry and I will see you in the next video.